schedule each other in part because they know each one a it's going to be a good test for your team early in the season but each one knows that this will be a, uh, a benefit come tournament time because these teams will win a lot of games two quality teams going at it here in Dallas and great to have you along for the ride I'm John Little with Steve Lansdale and our entire ACC network crew these teams met twice last year once in the regular season as OJ O'Finran runs onto one but it is offside Denver normally a team that likes to play two possession but uh, with athletes like O'Finran why not give him a chance uh, for the Pioneers they won three to one in the regular season in Denver last year and that was despite being outshot 22 to 5 by SMU in that matchup. And then in the postseason, SMU got a couple of seeing eye goals to go past Isaac Nami. And then Denver hit three posts within the last seven or eight minutes of the game to fall to SMU 2 to 1. And that is the big reason why Denver has had this one circled. And uh, also, like you mentioned off the top, Denver has 10 starters back off last year's team as Kieran Pino cuts in on the right foot. Now back on the left, looking to cross it, but Isaac Nami knows he can't give Pino a chance to touch it one more time and pounces on it. The Pioneers not only have 10, senior, uh, 10 returning starters back, they also get back three guys who missed the entire year last year with injuries. So in a way, it's almost like they have 13 starters back. I'm, I don't think the officials will allow you to play 13. Um, but this is a very, very veteran, experienced Denver team. And again, like we talked about in the pregame, these guys remember what it was like the last time in Dallas. They hit those three posts in the last few moments. And, uh, you know, that's one of those sort of heartbreaking, gut-wrenching kind of ways to end a season. Um, and, yeah, they've had it circled. They desperately want to beat SMU. They're also battle tested this year, however. This is their fourth straight road game to start the season. They'll have six straight to begin the year. They went to Cal, won two to one, took on number five Stanford on the road and won one nil, and then had a late lead at Washington before an equalizing goal with four minutes left helped the Huskies draw even to make that a 2 2 draw. And looking at the Massey ratings, which are one of the only rating services available early in the season that really truly start to factor in who you've played, where it was, the quality of opponent, and your result. Right now, Denver is number one in the Massey ratings through three games, and I know it's early, but it shows what a great start to the season they've had. It is early, but it's hard to imagine there's a better program. Um, they have elite talent all over the field. Uh, starting with Isaac Nami, the goalie, who is one of the best goalkeepers in the country, and everyone in front of him. There's just waves and waves of talent. And to hear uh, the SMU coaches talk about Denver, they play the game the right way. They play smart. They pass the ball. They prioritize possession. Uh, Jamie Franks and Kevin, Har Kevin Hudson are friends, and they have a great deal of admiration for each other and the way they run their programs and the style of soccer they teach. They've both been looking forward to this game because no matter the outcome, both teams will be better because of this game. Last season's postseason game, a 2-1 to one win for SMU. And it, by the way, it was 60 degrees and misting that night here at Washburn Soccer and Track Stadium. A little different tonight. Yeah, a little bit different. <laughs> Bailey Sparks started out with a seeing eye goal that just got through Nami, and Nami wishes he had that one back. And after that, SMU getting what would end up being the game winner from Jose Ortiz, and then they had to hold off Denver in the second half, a 69th minute PK goal. Uh, by Sam Bassett to cut it down to two to one. And as we mentioned, that SMU back line just able to hold off that Denver team that is that uh, was just peppering the goal and hitting post after post late. And SMU lucky enough to pick up the win at home in the round of 32 a season ago. SMU tried to build some possession and Pino pops it back. Pope will move it around for Cesar Ruval Caba. Ruvo Caba has been outstanding early this year for SMU, the transfer from Cal Poly Pomona. However, a giveaway here for the SMU Mustangs as Aiden Semmelsberger takes it away and tries to start something for the Pioneers. Your description of the end of the game last year in the playoffs was of holding on, was or holding off Denver was really the right way to say it, I think. 
you know, I joked a moment ago about how the refs probably won't let you play 13 or 14 guys at once. But in the latter moments of that game, it kind of felt like that, I think, if you were in the SMU camp, because the Pioneers just came at the SMU goal in waves. And as we said, they hit the goalpost three times in the waning moments. And holding off is a perfect description as SMU got a victory against a really quality team. SMU so far this season, 2-0-1, a giveaway. Bassett on the right foot trying to distribute to O'Finran and plays it back into possession to Semmelsberger as Denver sets up here. Ben Smith cutting in, dumps it out to Ronan Wynn. Wynn serves it into the box, and Ruvacaba with that one-touch clearance to give the Pioneers a throw-in. One of Denver's strengths is its passing ability, and on that offensive push, SMU had 10 players, including goalie Chance Johnson, inside the 18, or at least behind the 18. They're playing a very, very compact defensive structure at the moment, and the Pioneers will do well to, as you see right now, switch fields and try to spread out the Mustangs to create some lanes they can play through. Six minutes in here in Dallas, by the way, our referee is Michael Laverne, assisted by Chris Gordon and John Viavos II. Aaron Donahoe is our alternate official for today's action in Dallas. SMU starting off the season with a game against Air Force, a 1-0 victory, tied with ORU, and then it beat St. Louis last time out. St. Louis, the number six team in the country coming in after that victory over Indiana, and it was an SMU goal by Jalen Mitchell that got the job done. Nice pass through here to Martin Dominguez, who ran onto it, but Cesar Rubalcaba so quick and very well positioned at that center back spot. He didn't want to mess around with anything, a potential mistake that close to the goal and just knocked it out of danger's way. Georgievich trying to leap after this one, but can't grab it. And on the far side of the field, Ian Smith has it taken right back by SMU. However, Ian Smith grabs it back and then on his drive, it goes right into the head of Bailey Sparks for SMU, who goes down immediately. These guys are used to playing the ball off their head, but you see this. Smith gets the ball away from Georgievich, takes a couple dribbles and tees up a cross that just blasts into the side of Bailey Sparks' head. If you get it on your forehead, you almost don't feel it. But I don't know if that hit his ear and maybe left a bell ringing a little bit, but uh, lucky for the Mustangs, number 10 is up and ready to get back into the run of play. Men's college soccer this year, if you leave the match, then you cannot come back in for the remainder of that half. And so Sparks staying in at this point is huge. They're guaranteed to at least have the possibility of him being on the field for the next 37 and a half minutes. By the way, an 86 degree day here in Dallas. Very humid though, 64% humidity. There is a slight chance of a shower. We have not seen any lightning, but we have seen some rain off and on just Little dribbles of it throughout the afternoon. Nothing threatening at the moment, just scattered showers. And in addition to that, we've got a pretty good wind coming out of an interesting spot, the northeast corner of the stadium, which is to the top left, cutting in at 10 to 20 miles an hour. Yeah, 86 degrees feels pretty nice to the SMU guys who have been spending their summer and preseason camp running around in 100 plus. Probably pretty, pretty normal to the Pioneers though. Here's Jalen Mitchell turning on the ball, trying to march through center, and that was a really nice play to hold him up by Semmelsberger. However, Mitchell is right back on it. Mitchell making a move on the center back. Onto his right foot, the tip in by SMU. What a goal. Milton Lopez deflects it after Jalen Mitchell marched past Trevor Wright and into the box. And SMU goes up 1-0. Great deflection by Milton Lopez, but this play is all Jalen Mitchell. Just like Mitchell's goal the other night against St. Louis was set up by Kieran Pino, and he quickly gave the credit to Pino. This one, the credit goes to Mitchell because he fought through basically a wrestling match with Trevor Wright and then crossed over a defender to get one step of separation, send that pass into the middle, and Milton Lopez just threw a leg out and deflected it. 
beautiful goal thanks in large part to Jalen Mitchell. A ninth minute goal by Milton Lopez. His second of the season gets SMU on the board. Man, what a move by Jalen Mitchell. And I thought that back near midfield, I talked about it as it was happening, that Semmelsberger had held up Mitchell enough to really stop any kind of advancement. But then Mitchell just started to walk through traffic. Yeah, I think Mitchell really lost the ball for just a half a second, but he was quicker back to get back on his feet and, and he was able to regain possession. Just didn't give up and kept fighting and got through two defenders and then got around a third to get that cross. We talked about Mitchell, how he was a highly touted freshman last year, but he looks like he has grown up so much. He has adjusted to the college game. Um, just getting that extra a year of experience. He sees things differently, and he looks vastly improved over a year ago at this time. Neve Berkovitz's absence early this season is uh, definitely giving Mitchell more of a chance, and he's done a nice job as Dylan Akau, one of the best right backs in the country, is in. He crosses one out in front. Georgievich misses, and on the line, it is knocked down, and then taken in by Chance Johnson after a great opportunity for Denver. Beautiful run by a cow. Open run lets it go through. And then I think that was deflected by Nico Georgievich just throwing himself in front of the shot. Chance Johnson then able to snatch the rebound. Yeah, definitely off of a body there. May have been Owen Zarnick who it was off of. And as you mentioned, Georgievich was in the area as well. And that opportunity for Ian Smith as the right outside back and the left outside back got into the action there is cleared off the line by one of the SMU defenders. And he was so open momentarily. I thought we were going to have an equalizing goal just seconds after Lopez got SMU on the board. And Denver definitely capable. This is a Denver team that is. Scored a little bit better than SMU so far this season with five goals to SMU's three through their first three matches. The number nine Pioneers, top 10 team in the nation after their early season successes against Cal and Stanford. And SMU head coach Kevin Hudson saying, yeah, they're definitely deserving of that. And when you think about They've got the whole package, the, the experience, the keeper, and then the, <laughs> the resume as well. This is a legit pioneer program. Oh, it's outstanding. I mean, we could spend the next 90 minutes talking about the strength and the quality of both of these teams. And the goal totals that you, that you mentioned, five for Denver so far and three for SMU, should be perhaps a bit misleading because that's not to suggest that these are not exceptional teams with the ability to score but both teams value and prioritize possession so much that part of a victory is simply keeping the ball away from the other team so the other team cannot shoot you'll see a lot of t a lot of one goal games for both of these teams and i think you can safely guess that each of these teams will be on the upper end of a lot of those one goal games no doubt about it smu making it tough as denver advances through the final third and here's danny escorcia who gets something started from his midfield spot out to pino smu already up one to nothing off the milton lopez goal and the gorgeous assist by jalen mitchell mitchell's second assist of his career and for lopez his second goal and Lopez Thursday night against St. Louis was a little bit under the weather. You get a goal 10 minutes in or nine minutes in, whatever it was, that'll make you feel better in a hurry. No doubt about it. Lopez, even after the match the other day, wasn't just feeling poorly going into the match. He was feeling poorly coming out of it and needed some medical attention. But thankfully, young man was able to bounce back and make the start again today. And. SMU will also see some of Chris Demon at the striker spot as Lopez is unable to hold this one. And Denver, that experienced back line, moves it up. Trevor Wright wearing number three, who missed all of last season with an injury. And number four, Jason Baloli, are the two center backs in this one to start it out for the Pioneers. Baloli, a guy that was the defensive player of the year in the Summit League last year. 
And those two are not just talented, they are big. Uh, they both go 6-3. They're both very strong, physically strong players. They're exceptional in the air. They will be targets uh, for the Pioneers on set pieces. And if you're going to go through the middle on Denver, you're going to have to wade through some pretty serious traffic because uh, Bololi and Wright will clog up a lot of traffic for strikers trying to come through. Now this Pioneer bunch, they've got a lot of size. They haven't had a ton of success so far this year out of the corner. Only two corner opportunities against Washington, but Bassett lining this one up. One of the top assist men in Denver history. Bassett, near post, headed out by Georgievic. Backed up, though, by Denver, and Ben Smith runs it down to the end line. Smith centers it, little heel kick, and sitting down on the ball inside the 18 for a moment there was Ronan Wynn, but SMU able to slice it out as Nico Georgievich will trade back to his traditional right outside back spot by getting it across the field. Your comment about the size of the Denver roster is legit. You hear coaches talk about targeting guys on set pieces, and you'll, they'll say that th th this guy is six feet tall, this guy is six foot one. The Pioneers have six players listed on their roster at six foot three. Mm. This is a big, big roster for Denver. SMU with the ninth minute goal off of Milton Lopez's right leg thanks to the run by Jalen Mitchell it's the first time that Denver has been down in a match this season and we'll see how the pioneers respond well, they got down a couple last year against SMU and responded with a goal that cut the margin in half and then they came at the Mustangs in waves and with 75 minutes still to go in this, you can bet the Pioneers are not phased one bit. Since 2012, Denver has 12 wins when the opponent scores first and seven ties in those respects. 43 losses when the opponent strikes first, as the SMU Mustangs have been able to do today. This is the front end of a doubleheader today. The SMU women will take on TCU. That'll be at about 9 o'clock this evening as Salvo plays it out wide to Georgievich. SMU has some space. Georgievich cutting onto his left foot. Georgievich looking to drive it, runs into a cow. Mitchell backs it up, and Sparks plays it out wide for Pope. Now slicing onto it, Kieran Pino with a nifty dribble trying to take it through two, but he's denied. However, a cow can't make the clearance there, at least cleanly. Denver will have a throw in. Kieran Pino has a, an element of Houdini in him. He was sort of bracketed by a pair of defenders and managed to play the ball right through the wickets of both of them, I think. And then he ended up getting held up so he couldn't run around and chase, chase down the ball, but he got the ball through where there didn't seem to be much space at all. The shortest distance between any two places is a straight line, right? And it kind of looked like he, he wanted to get at the goal no matter who was in front of him, even though he was marked by two defenders. Dylan Akau getting it back from Rowan, Ronan Wynn. A through ball coming in here, Ruval Kaba. Runs it onto his right foot and steers it up the middle for Alex Salvo. Looked like maybe a slight miscommunication with Rubalcaba and Chance Johnson, who I think Rubalcaba was inviting Johnson to come out and scoop up the ball as as his, as Rubalcaba ran sort of interference and then realized he, Johnson wasn't going to get there in time and he was able to turn away and clear it out for the Mustangs. 17 minutes gone in the opening half. SMU with the opener. Off the foot of their striker, Milton Lopez. Pioneers trying to strike back. And here's the dangerous Dylan Akau. Akau slices toward the middle, but Pope able to get it away from him, lay it out to Bailey Sparks, who springs Jalen Mitchell, at least for the moment. As you mentioned off the top, this is going to be a pretty soccer match. This is. 
going to be a couple teams that really want to play two possession. They would love to be at that 60% possession. They absolutely pride themselves on being able to keep possession and believe they can do it against the other as Georgievich with a little bit of a meg to get himself up the field, turns it inside to Escorcia. One touch in the direction of Lopez, but just wide enough. They both value possession, and they both have already been challenged by their coaches. After the Stanford game, Jamie Franks challenged his uh, his team to play with the higher compete level and, and uh, close in on tackles a little more. After the draw against Oral Roberts, Kevin Hudson had roughly the same conversation with his team, and both, te both coaches said they were very pleased with the increase in urgency and intensity in the ensuing games after those conversations were had. O.J. O'Finran, strong, fast player, dispossessed, and Akal backs it up for the Pioneers. Now the Pioneers have just had incredible success under Jamie Franks in so many respects. 111 wins in his 10 seasons now as Ian Smith throws on the brakes and gets it back out front to Semmelsberger. 2016 National Coaching Staff of the Year and five times this coaching staff has been the coaching staff of the year in the summit. Good opportunity here for the Pioneers, but unable to hold it on the end line as it trickles over is Ronan Wynn and a goal kick for SMU. Speaking of that Denver coaching staff, there may be no staff in the country that takes more seriously the student part of the term student athlete. This Denver Pioneers team has been among the top five GPAs in the country in five of the last eight years and has never been outside the top five GPAs. Wow. This is a group that stresses academics to the highest degree at very good school. Kevin Hudson's group is, has a similar focus at SMU, but that those stats for Denver, top five every year, that is absolutely incredible. Remmelsberger stepping on this. Down to a cow who steps in with the left foot, plays it inside off the chest of Sam Bassett, who tries to run down Pino and in the process picks up the foul one of the first ones of the match so far on either side Pino one of the things he does very well he'll run onto the ball to get possession and then he'll turn his body in between an opponent and the ball and that's exactly what he did there you see the disbelief on Sam Bassett's face um, or excuse me uh, Keegan Kelly's face he didn't think he had committed any major infraction but Pino got between him and the ball and the contact from behind hit sent Pino to the deck. Kelly, another one of these big players for Denver at six foot one. A freshman, but he's 20 years old. One of the top young players in New Zealand as he decided to come over to Denver and has paid immediate dividends with two goals, including a game winner over his first three matches. And this is his third start. Yeah, Takeaway, he... O'Finran is going to dump it back in the direction of Sam Bassett, but he wants possession instead. Kelly is a guy, yes, he's new in Denver, but he doesn't look or play like a freshman. Along that wall for Ian Smith, tries to drive it in off of Georgievich, and then Salvo heads it out, a half clearance, backed up by Baloli. Sends it over to a cow. The touch inside goes to Ronan Wynn. Wynn giving some ground against Salvo. And now turning it back outside for Jason Baloli as Denver looks to reverse the field. However, not a great ball and a good win by Jalen Mitchell to make Denver recollect. A little bit of frustration there by Mitchell. He got the slide and knocked the ball away, but not in a position where Bailey Sparks could track it, track it down. So Denver was able to keep possession. Chance Johnson, who has that nice leg out beyond at midfield. Baloli called for the foul, leaning in and over Milton Lopez to give SMU a restart from midfield. 
Baloli is not only four inches taller than Lopez, but he looks like he's probably got 20 pounds on him, if not more. He is a big, strong man. He looks kind of like a strong safety back there in the middle of the Denver defense. And when he got into Lopez's back, the laws of physics kicked in there. So far, two shots for SMU. One of them went in the back of the goal. One shot for Denver. It was saved. Here's Sparks out wide to Georgievich. Georgievich back to Sparks in the middle. Sparks chips it over the top, and nobody really there. Escorcia, kind of the intended target, but an easy play for Isaac Nami, second in the nation in shutouts last year. In 2023, he had 11 clean sheets. When Escorcia was unable to track that shot, that pass down, he looked back at Bailey Sparks and gave him a little hand signal as if to say, I see what you were doing there. I should have hit the gas a little quicker. Watch to see if they try, if the Mustangs try that again, having Bailey Sparks pull out his pitching wedge and try to flip one over this big tall back line for the Pioneers. Remember, it's only the fourth match that those two, fourth match that's counted that Bailey Sparks and Escorsi have played together, trying to connect up front. And on Denver's giveaway, SMU with the throw in, 21 minutes remaining in the opening half. And Lopez's opener giving SMU the early advantage. Like we said, SMU looking for back to back wins against top 25 teams for the first time under Kevin Hudson. And that shocked me as it did you. However, remember that's not back to back wins basically when you play a top 25 team that's consecutive games right. that happen to be against a top 25 team where you pick up a win so uh, you've got to have that uh, quality of opponent on back to back days and by the way SMU is going to get another quality opponent coming in here in pit they're ranked number three in the nation right now a cow onto his right foot this is dangerous slides it across Rubacaba is there and then Pino to send it out yeah, Pitt's coming into Dallas ranked, but if you look at it, it seems like most of the ACC is ranked. Right. Um, last year, at one point, you had 11 ACC teams in the top 25, and I think it's close to that again. Kevin Hudson has gone on record saying that joining the ACC as a men's soccer team is a little bit like a football team joining the SEC where it is just a brutal gauntlet from one game to the next, to the next, to the next. Every team you're going to see is good, which is another reason why playing a high-quality opponent like the Denver Pioneers early is critically important. Like we told you before, this is, while it's not the warmest night that we've had at 86 degrees, it's plenty humid, 64% humidity, and Brock Pope is having trouble with that left hamstring and if he's not able to stay in the match here, as we reach a hydration break, if he's not able to stay in the match, he would not be eligible to come back into the match until the second half. So we will step away with 20 minutes left in the opening half. The SMU Mustangs on top of number nine, Denver. One nothing here in Dallas on the eight. Guess I won't be making my famous burgers. I'll text everyone to cancel. The Rivera State's not even raining at their house. Aren't they like two blocks away? It is coming down out here. It really is. That was cheese. Yes, it was. Keep walking, Arch. I bet this is a micro storm. What's a micro storm? I don't actually know. Geico can help when you get a flat tire with their easy app and 24 7 help. To the right now. To the left. No, to the left. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Is the GPS playing the cha-cha slide? No. Now it's time to get funky. Funky's not a direction. To the right now. To the left. Go to the right. Right, right. Freeze. Everybody clap your hands. Whatever you need, from coverage to service, get more with Geico. Welcome back into Dallas. Lamar Bynum coming in for the SMU Mustangs. He may not have been planning to come in so quickly, but Brock Pope came up a, a little bit lame. A right hamstring tightness situation. It did appear to be a cramping situation, and Bynum is in for the first time. Bynum, who has Colorado roots himself in that 
He played several years for CSU Pueblo as an outside back and was a 2022 All-American before transferring to SMU where he started all 18 games last season. He comes in for Brock Pope here. And SMU grateful to have a very experienced backup to replace Brock Pope. Meanwhile, on the Denver side of things, Lucas Fisher is on for the first time. You got to look at the uh, 5'10 graduate. And SMU also making a change at striker as Chris Demon will come in for Milton Lopez. I'm John Little back alongside Steve Lansdale. And uh, Steve, the new, the rule changes this year when it comes to uh, substitutions, uh, not insignificant uh, when you think about losing a defender guaranteed for the next 20 minutes if you're SMU. Absolutely. I mean, as we know, in the old days, you could come out and go back in after a little bit. Um, that changes. And obviously, Brock Pope starts for a reason. He's a terrific defender. For the Mustangs, you're lucky to have a guy like Lamar Bynum uh, ready to step in for him because, as you said, he started every game last year. And he's very, very steady. He's a good athlete. He can run with just about anybody, but he's very steady. He will make the smart play uh, and eliminate mistakes, which is critically important, obviously, on the defensive end. Foul coming against Denver. Initially, it was a play on with a little advantage for SMU as Salvo got bumped in the back. And Michael Laverne, our referee, says this is going to be SMU ball. SMU in the red. And Denver in the black today. A vertical ball for Demon on for the first time. Demon with the header. He gets knocked down. That's got to be the spot. You bet it is. And SMU has a brilliant opportunity to go up 2-0. And that is what Chris Demon gives you. He is, he can run. He can really run. Milton Lopez, the starter, got the goal. Bringing Demon in off the bench is like bringing in a relief pitcher who throws 98 miles an hour. He runs in, splits. Not one, not two, but there's a third defender in the re in the area. Isaac Nami had no choice but to take him down as he went for the ball. I don't think I don't even think Nami was trying to hit Demon, but he was moving so fast that once Demon popped the ball through, you either take him down and give up a penalty kick or you give up a slam dunk goal. Bailey Sparks opened the season with a penalty kick goal for SMU against Air Force. It was the first of his career, so he's one for one on the PKs and Isaac Nami who's an excellent shot stopper has a chance to atone for his mistake the foul in the box Sparks pulling it and to nothing SMU great shot by Sparks who approaches the ball and then he does a very slow sort of a stutter step to try to get just a hint of which which way Nami was going to go. Look, Nami's as good a shot stopper as any goalkeeper in America. He is absolutely elite. But if a penalty kick is struck properly, it should go in 90 to 95 percent of the time. And Bailey Sparks hits him as well as anybody. The SMU bench absolutely loves it. And for the second straight time at home against the Denver Pioneers, SMU goes up 2-0 in the first half as Bailey Sparks is the latest man to get on the board. We talked at the beginning about how the Denver Pioneers remember, obviously, their last trip to Dallas and the disappointment that they felt when they went home uh, at the end of the season. And part of the storyline for tonight's game was whether the Mustangs would be able to match the inevitable energy and intensity and urgency with which the Pioneers would open this game. Through the first 25 minutes, I think you'd have to say the Mustangs have matched it beautifully. No doubt about it as SMU commits a foul here. And Demon, who was able to Now, well, here's going to the restart. Demon, who was the player that was pulled down inside the box, or at least the contact was made by the keeper, Isaac Nami, to send him down to help make it 2 0. He pays immediate dividends coming in off the pine. And SMU with a fantastic start against a team that has started 2 0 and 1 against outstanding competition. And meanwhile, on the SMU side, 
Seems like things are getting better as the year goes on. And SMU has some starters back from last year, but it's not like the 10 starters or the 13 starters, if you want to call it that, like that for uh, Denver. SMU has been trying to build continuity as the season's gone on. Here's a long vertical ball onside, and that is played into the box. Knocked down, Bynum able to send it away after Lucas Fisher had that shot tipped away. And after the fight for it against the line, SMU will have the throw in here. It's a good serve. It's a beautiful serve, and if you watch this, Ian Smith gets this serve back into play, but the momentum that he and Nico Georgievich have carried well out of bounds. Contact was made probably two or three steps outside the end line, and Ian Smith hit the deck on the red track surface, I guess that is, behind the south goal. Lucky for the Pioneers, he was able to get up and shake that off. Dangerous chance for the Pioneers all the way through the box and cleared away by Bynum. Because waiting there on the backside was Dylan Akau, hoping for a chance to make it 2-1. to one. And that clearance by Bynum was harder than it looked because he is backpedaling. His momentum is going away from the ball. And when he hit it for just a second, I thought he was going to send a shot into the upper 90 that even six foot four Chance Johnson wouldn't have been able to reach. Under 17 to play in the opening half. It's a 2 nothing advantage for SMU on Denver. And look at this. you got about 16 players within three yards of the goal mouth. I know Chance Johnson is, I guess, the tallest player out on the field. And now, I'm just going to say not by much, right? Not by much, right. We talked about how the Pioneers have a bunch of 6'3 guys. Obviously, Johnson gets to use his hands, but what a group. Here's the serve. Johnson does punch it out. And into the crowd, the drive by Ben Smith predictably gets knocked down. Jalen Mitchell, a little shoulder charge. It's outside the box, but a foul. And another restart coming up for Denver, just outside the 18 on the left side. Mitchell is arguing that he kept his arm and his shoulder down, and that should be viewed as a legal shoulder charge. And I think it was, except the ball was already played forward, and therefore he was playing the man not as part of the ball in play, uh, hence the whistle from a very dangerous spot for the Pioneers. No doubt about it. And pass it. The senior from Littleton, Colorado, gets a chance here from the right side of Chance Johnson with some options. Johnson with a better view this time. On that previous corner, he had basically a team picture right in his lap. Now he's got a little bit of breathing room. Sam Bassett goes after the goal, and it's deflected in! A goal for Denver! Ronan Wynn appears to have punched it through. In a high-scoring first half, it's 2-1. to one. I don't know if Wynn hit that ball into the goal or if the ball hit Wynn and ended up into the goal because Chance Johnson simply punched it with both fists. And Wynn is in the right place at the right time. And I'm not sure this is going to be an own goal. Wynn obviously puts up his fist. And Trevor Wright was in the same vicinity. O.J. Ofenrun was, Ofenrun was in the same vicinity. It was a crowd in there in front of Johnson. Obviously, he'd love to have that one back and try to catch it cleanly rather than punching it. And certainly something that will be looked at in replay to see exactly who gets the goal. If it is wins, it is his first of the season. As we told you, his third of his career. But I think there's a, there's a possibility that ends up being an own goal after a really nicely placed ball by Sam Bassett and then perhaps going off of an SMU player after the punch by Johnson in the middle of that crowd. So 15 minutes left in the first half, and Denver has struck back. We said a few moments ago that falling behind is not gonna phase this Pioneers team, and they just proved, it, proved that to be true. Throw in for Denver on the way. Denver working with the wind in this half. And Roman Wynn, one of the defenders, ready to trigger it in. The 5'10 redshirt senior from New Zealand. Akau back to Wynn. Wynn is able to slip it past 
Bynum, but there to back him up is Salvo. SMU still has some work to clear it. Can't quite get it done, at least for now. But Danny Escorcia is one of the best work rate players that SMU has. Feeds it up the side to Jalen Mitchell. SMU still working to get out of their own end. This Denver team pretty hungry to try to make it level by halftime. Yeah, the Pioneers pressing high and trying to force that Mustang defense into a possible error on the back end. And, you know, maybe the approach is, well, Lamar Bynum came off the bench. But Lamar Bynum is a very steady defender in his own right. So if you're trailing, yes, you do mix in some pressure to try to force errors. Uh, but it's not like this is an inexperienced back line that will get easily flustered for SMU. Again, Bynum making the 18 starts last year for SMU. A lot of scoring early on. 2-1 was the final last year between these two teams in the postseason. And in the regular season, it was a 3-1 final. Denver scored the first three in the first half. And SMU really could never completely mount the comeback. They had a tough time really getting going last year against Denver as they let in some goals that they felt they don't normally let in, and I think the same could be said for Denver in their matchup against SMU in the postseason. Here's Mitchell playing it out wide to Georgievich. Georgievich's serve is knocked down for a throw in. That description, though, not letting in or letting in goals that you don't normally let in, that is a byproduct of playing really good teams. There you go. They force you to do things that you don't normally do. Three subs coming in for the Denver Pioneers, and that includes David Biggers. Biggers is back after playing the first game of the season and starting it, but missing the last couple. Also in, Kyle McGowan. He's an attacking midfielder. Bryce Willoughby is on as well, a 6'2 redshirt sophomore. He's out of Houston. Gives Denver a different dimension up front. Here's Jalen Mitchell trying to get saucy again. And it ends up in a goal kick for Denver. A nice quick crossover there, trying to get a, a step of separation, but ran out of room when the touch line or the end line snuck up on him. The initial goal for SMU, Milton Lopez off the assist by Jalen Mitchell, then a penalty kick goal by Bailey Sparks, followed by a Denver goal. And Officially, that has been given to O.J. O'Finran. And O'Finran scores his second of the season. And O'Finran also in the top 10 all-time in Denver D1 history when it comes to goals. That is his 15th goal of his career. Cutting in, Dylan Akau. Back to Willoughby. Trying to cross it, but Willoughby was just offsides, and he can't believe it. Yeah, I understand his objection. He was... Very, very close to being even with Lamar Bynum in the back. And you see Ruvel Caba in the middle. Ruvel Caba actually, I think, was the one closest to Willoughby in terms of offside, but I think the, the call was the correct one. I think Willoughby was about a step offside. But of course, he had his back to the center of the field and didn't see Ruvel Caba over there. But Willoughby right on cue. He's got that ability to get vertical. And they love that about the redshirt sophomore out of Houston. And here he wins a second ball, tries to start something. However, SMU takes it away. And Kieran Pino through the middle, trying to keep possession, sliding onto it. And finally, the touch out to Bynum. See if SMU can corral some possession. Denver has had the better run of possession, at least in the opening half against SMU. Pino fought through four defenders there keeping possession for SMU. That is one of the big things that the Mustangs missed when he was out of the lineup. And his ability to go through traffic where there seemingly is no way to get through is an enormous addition to what the Mustangs can do. Pino's header knocked down by David Biggers. And a chance for Isaac Nami to play it out of the back. Denver a 12-3-5 record last season. No losses in conference play during the regular season. 
just had an excellent year as they won the regular season in the Summit League and followed that up with a loss in the tournament. However, their body of work was great enough to get Jamie Frank's team into the postseason yet again. For Franks, this is his 13th year overall at Denver, but 10th as head coach. And see him standing next to his brother, Brad Franks, in his fourth year as an assistant. SMU going into the bench, getting Richard Garcia in, and also in for the first time, Noah Irvin Garcia, the second year player here at SMU, the transfer from Cal Poly, and Noah Irvin, a true sophomore for the Mustangs. Ryan Clanton Pimentel also checking in for SMU. So you're now asking several guys off the bench to try to finish off the last eight and a half minutes of this first half. And that last substitution gets Pino off the field. As a foul goes against Denver, Ben Smith doesn't like it. Gets the smier, smaller Clanton Pimentel. And I think it's exactly that, the size difference factored into that call. Clanton Pimentel is listed as only five foot six. So if you jump up for a head ball near him, it's going to look like you landed on top of him. Or maybe it makes it easier to land on top of him. Exactly. Eight minutes remaining in the opening half. Pioneers looking for the equalizer. A coup with the one touch, but can't quite get it past Lamar Bynum. Sends it back to Ruval Caba. And now Alex Salvo, the holding midfielder for SMU, plays it across. And a good ball to spring Owen Zarnick. SMU trying to advance as Noah Irvin comes up the right flank. It really was a nice job by Salvo because he got the pass, saw two defenders in front of him, and he did more than a full 360 to spin away, patiently looking for someone to get the ball away, found Owen Zarnick with some space to play it upfield. Oh, it was a good 421 at least, I agree. 421, not 420? Uh, no. Okay. We've got next-gen stats here at the ACC Network, don't you know? Lamar Bynum out to Zarnick again. Denver with some consistent pressure. Irvin in behind, advances one. Toward the 18, that one touch toward Clinton Pimentel. He's able to keep it off the end line, I thought, but evidently not. That was a, oh, it's going to be an offside, excuse me. But uh, Demon's touch there in the direction of Clinton Pimentel was the right idea, but Clinton Pimentel was behind the last line of defense. I agree with you that he kept it off the line. I, I'm not sure I agree with the offside call. It looked like Clinton Pimentel uh, was even with a defender, but again, we have to admit in every game, we don't have the same line of sight that the lineman, linesman does. So our angle can be a bit deceptive. First day of September, great early season test for these two teams. Again, like we said, Denver after the loss in the round of 32 last year here at SMU had this one <laughs> circled on their schedule. Head coach Jamie Franks said as much. And there was a great commitment by the Denver Pioneers after that 2-1 to loss here in Dallas that after they came back from the Thanksgiving break, they got right back after it as a team. There was no let up, right to off-season training, and honestly, really even before the Thanksgiving break, they were right back uh, in the wood shop, if you will, trying to figure out what they needed to do to get better as Willoughby is caught off sides for the second time. But... Uh, this Denver team has shown a great commitment to bounce back after last year's loss to SMU. Yeah, think about every interview you've ever heard with a player or a coach after a loss that ends a season. Almost invariably, the first comment is, I'm going to take a couple weeks and let my body recover and get some right. rest and all that sort of thing. Coach Frank said his team was in the weight room the day after that game. Wow. The day after. And we talk about, you know, we talked a moment ago about the greats, the academic performance of the Pioneers. I think they're related. It, it's, it's related to the character of these guys who understand that to have a great team in the fall, you've got to have a great spring. And in order to have a great spring, you've got to have a great offseason. That great spring started the day after the loss to SMU. And I... I wonder if you did a survey of every team that got eliminated during the NCAA tournament, 
If you asked them how many were in the gym the next day, would any say yes? I, I don't know if they would. I, I thought that was a huge eye opener and obviously the results of a, of a team that's player led. I, I think that's tough for a coach to ask a team after a heartbreaking loss. Right. Get right back in there. Right. You know, but maybe he talked you about say, the senior leaders yes. saying that they led the charge. They rallied the, the, the team and got them into the gym the next day. Um, he didn't say it, but I it kind of felt like Coach Franks was even a little surprised to see them in there. But in the end, that is the kind of culture that they've wanted to build at Denver. And culture is the results of, of your habits, of your what you do, your performances, if you will, as there's a foul on, on Denver. And consistently, this Pioneer team is a disciplined bunch, is a committed bunch on the field, in the classroom, in every way. As SMU restarts it, three and a half to play in the opening half. Mustangs up two to one. Bynum gets leaned on, looking to skirt the sideline. Bynum able to stay in. This is Bynum's run, and it is a corner kick upcoming as it went off of Dylan Akau. How about that run by Bynum? Yeah, I think Akau and Kyle McGowan both thought that ball was going to run out of bounds. The only one who didn't think so was Lamar Bynum, and he took a sort of circuitous route almost running into the Denver bench, but he looped back in, kept possession, and forced that corner. Terrific run by Bynum. And SMU has an opportunity at a corner. Washington took 10 corners and scored off two of them on Thursday against this Denver team. This is the first chance at a similar set piece for SMU, and Pino takes it with the inside of his left foot to the right side of the keeper, Nami. Pino. Ball drifting away, headed in by Bynum. Second touch, now a third touch by Ruvo. Kaba is up and over the top as Denver survives a header opportunity by the senior. We've talked a bit about the extraordinary size that the Pioneers have on their roster. Well, the Mustangs have a couple of big guys too, and they will send two or even th three defenders forward on set pieces and corners. Ruval Kaba is tall and can get in the air. Owen Zarnick is the tallest player on the team at 6'3". He can get in the air. Lamar Bynum, Brock Pope before he came out. These guys are all listed as defenders, but make no mistake, on set pieces, they are offensive weapons. It's obvious that Ruval Kaba is incredibly fit and really has an excellent vertical in addition to that 6'2 frame. Buck 40 to go in the first half. That pressure continues by Denver, trying to get SMU to make a mistake, but Johnson slides one up. And eventually the throw in goes to SMU. After this early start, the crowd continuing to file in here in Dallas and sensing how competitive this match has been for sure, as that was into touch. Quick hustle by Ben Smith to get that re that throw in, trying to catch the Mustangs sleeping on a restart. Ken Denver would love to have that equalizer, the final minute of the opening half. You're in Dallas with SMU up two to one against a team that's fastly becoming a big rival. A cow goes outside and now on the right foot of. Denver into the box and a turn on it and the driven just a little bit wide. It was so quick how Kyle McGowan got that one in and then an excellent opportunity on the other end as yes, it was Sam Bassett settling it down with the chest and then ripping it wide. When you get a line drive into the box like that, it's one thing to get your chest in front of it and knock it down, but Bassett able to give with the ball as it hit his chest, able to drop it where it was still within range. If he had stayed firm in his footing that ball would have bounced 10 yards away from him he never would have been able to get a shot away beautiful settle by Bassett and almost a very and a very close shot to that right post Summit League midfielder of the year nearly making that leveling play and at halftime it unless it really picks up 84 degrees as we go to the second half and still 68 percent humidity in fact the humidity getting worse as we go Again, there's that slight possibility of a straight shower. 
uh, coming through the area, and we'll let you know about that. Most of them have stayed north tonight by a good 20 miles. And in addition to that, we've got some wind coming out of the northeast as well. That's the top left of your screen, cutting diagonally across the field, if you will, at 10 to 15 miles an hour. And SMU in the red with the early possession here. SMU outshot by Denver in the first half, five to four. Georgievich, it seems like, is always going down, and he goes down here. Bassett gives it up. Bryce Willoughby has a chance. Moving on to his right foot, right around Bynum. Now onto his left foot, he hits the post. Willoughby a little bit unlucky, and are they going to say it went out of play? I think they are, and in the process, a corner coming up for Denver as there's a player down. I believe that is Keegan Kelly who's down. And it's never a good sign when you see teammates looking at the bench and waving for medical attention. Now you see referee Michael Laverne also requesting some help from the Denver bench. Kelly getting some help from Jason Beloli. So Kelly kind of going shoulder to shoulder there with Ruval Caba and then hitting the ground hard. Yeah, it didn't look like the collision with Ruval Caba was unusually hard. I think you're right. I think it may have been the impact with the ground that left Kelly a little bit shaken up, but obviously hopefully for the Pioneers, he's going to be able to shake this off and continue. They're checking that clavicle area, which is always a worry. That shoulder clavicle area. Great to see him up and able to move it around a little bit. Keegan Kelly Already has two goals this season. One of the best young players in New Zealand stalking off and actually able to reach out and take the bottle with his right hand. And I, again, I think that's really good news for Denver. Yeah, and better news, he's walking straight to the middle of the field so he can go back in after uh, when he gets waved in by the officials. So the Pioneers will be a man short on this corner kick. But if that means getting number 18 back in the lineup, they will gladly forfeit a chance here. It's just a handoff and out of the sideline, the header goes down on, by Ian Smith. Good job by Sam Bassett to send it right over to Ian Smith. It was gonna go wide. It was gonna go wide, but not far enough wide that Chance Johnson was willing to take any chances, so to speak. That was purely accidental. More importantly for the Pioneers, Keegan Kelly is back on the field. When he was helped up by the trainer, he was holding his right shoulder clavicle area and used his left hand to accept the assistance from the trainer, which I thought momentarily could be particularly concerning. But as you said, the closer he got to the sideline, he was already reaching out with his, his right arm to get the water bottle and immediately squirted it on his head. And uh, hopefully number 18 is feeling feeling better and ready to play the rest of the game. Denver with a rare vertical ball, but it is tracked down by Georgievich for SMU. Mustangs with a little possession up the wing to Bynum. Too far for Pinos playing more of a midfield spot right now. And Bynum able to run back onto one. Sparks turns back as Willoughby really tries to pressure in. And Ruval Caba able to play one out into space to Jalen Mitchell, who's already made one goal-making play in this one. Yeah, nice patience by Mitchell. He had a little bit of space in front of him, but he did a quick survey of the uh, manpower, and he saw more black jerseys than red, so he slowed up and waited for Georgievich to join him on the right flank uh, in order to keep possession for SMU. That one too strong for Escorcia, but Sparks able to back it up for SMU. And the Mustangs coming off of a 1-0 victory against number six St. Louis on Thursday, trying to back that up with a victory over a number nine team in the country in Denver. SMU looking for wins over top 25 teams in back-to-back -back games for the first time under Kevin Hudson. And again, it's been 10 years that Kevin Hudson has been the bench boss here in Dallas. SMU with a winner. And Pino trying to cut in, but dispossessed by Ronan Wynn, who turns it back upfield. John Little and Steve Lansdale. SMU's 
early season schedule ramped up really quickly, didn't it? I mean, Air Force was a one-win team last year, but then you go up against ORU, they're per perennially pretty good. St. Louis, very good. Denver, just exceptional. And then you could have the number three team in the nation or maybe even better coming in here in a few days in Pittsburgh on Thursday. It's amazing how quickly it ramps up into some really big matches for SMU. A lot of times you can look at a schedule and even when there are consecutive uh, really tough matchups, you can look further down the schedule and say, all right, well, we can catch our breath on this one. Right. That really doesn't exist. I think SMU will get to catch its breath in December. Little tip in. That wasn't by Willoughby. I think it was Zarnick that may have touched it. And I think you're right. And that topspin created off his foot just floated nicely into his goalkeeper's hands. SMU may be jumping into ACC play next time out as they take on Pitt. And I said that was on Thursday. It's on Friday. My apologies. In any event, after that, they do have a couple non-conference games. They're going to take on a couple in-state teams, UIW, on the 16th of September and UTRGV on the 29th of September as well. But, uh, yeah, those will be welcome games as well as... That game coming up on Saturday, the 7th, as SMU will take on Pitt. Just changing things up on me. We've been Thursday, Saturday, <laughs> Thursday, Saturday. Trying to get my bearings here, Steve. It's been tough. So a Saturday matchup for SMU next time out. It's the SMU women that will play on Thursday as Willoughby turns it up the field to Ian Smith. Smith grinding with Salvo. Smith trying to cross it. It will be a corner. Nice pursuit by Salvo, but really jo nice job by Smith as well. Holding off Salvo, keeping possession, absorbing a bit of a shoulder charge, and keeping his balance enough to crank one toward the middle of the field. Yes, it was blocked by Salvo, but it did get the uh, the Pioneers a corner kick. Already twice as many corners in this game as they had at UW the other day. Bassett. Near post, Georgievich smartly away. Chance for a throw in for Denver and Bassett. Was out of bounds at the same time as Ian Smith there. And before the entry pass, there's going to be an opportunity for Denver to make a substitution. Lucas Fisher is on, and Keegan Kelly comes out, and so we will not see Keegan Kelly for the rest of this match. So evidently, whatever happened to Kelly was enough to keep him out for the rest of it. Although, as you say that, I just watched him sit down on the bench. It was his right shoulder that was being looked at, and as he sat on the bench, he leaned down and put his weight on his right hand. So, and now we see him working with the trainer, getting his right hip looked at. Mm. Obviously, the Pioneers hope that Kelly's okay going forward because he's a terrific addition to this lineup. So that is a potential leveling goal scorer for Denver, who is not available for the rest of the match. Again, if you're just joining us, maybe see a, a big matchup like SMU and Denver on the schedule tonight on a Sunday, and you got nothing else to do before NFL season starts, and you're like, what is this new look? Well, it's a, a brand new rule this year in men's college soccer, not on the women's side, where you can't re-enter after coming out in any given half. Oh, here's a great look for Bassett. Bassett turns, drives it across, and just mishit it. Now backed up by Ronan Wynn. Wynn gets it into the mixer. Salvo plays it out front, but again, Bassett has a chance. Gets it back on the tic-tac-toe, and Sparks is able to take it away for SMU. Bassett hit the deck when he lost the ball there, but there was absolutely no infraction in the box that time. He just got bumped off the ball. The Pioneers continue to buzz, looking for the equalizing goal after SMU went up 2-0. Georgievich is there, but Bassett lurking. And a throw in for SMU. So even calm on the ball by yeah. Georgievich. He had his back to Bassett, so you've got one of the best players in America hunting that ball. And he takes a couple of touches, turned up field, and banged it off of Bassett to get the throw. And especially with Bassett right there, a player, you've got to know where he is at all times. You've got to know if he's on your back or, you know, if he's, he's playing off of you. So difficult to do that. 
He does so many things so well. I think if you're playing against Denver, I think you'd be tempted as a coach to, you know, double team him right after the national anthem. He does everything for this Pioneers team. Of course, we say that, and you feel like you're starting to take away a little bit from the uh, nine other returning starters on this team. Good reversal out to Georgievich, who is looking to trade paint with Bassett. Georgievich with a great run into the middle to get space, and here comes Escorcia stopping on it. Back to Georgievich. Georgievich settling it down, sidewinding drive, driven into the air, and Bassett catches up with it for Denver. Really nice run by Nico Georgievich, who cut back behind a, defend, a defender twice on that on that run of about 40 or 50 yards to get into the offensive third and create a chance. I think if his pass to Escorcia had been maybe one or two steps out further out in front, Escorcia might have been able to tee up one of his teammates for a shot. Wow, Sparks with a full 360. Maybe it was a 421 again. Now out to the edge, Mitchell goes inside. Mitchell takes over again. Mitchell on the run. He stops on it, drawing defenders. Sparks chipping it in, in the direction of Lopez, trying to put it off of Lopez's forehead, but just a little too high. Really nice defensive effort there by the Pioneers because Mitchell ran, when Mitchell ran onto that ball, he was alone. He had several yards of space, and he was going so fast that he pushed it across the top of the box, and the Pioneers closed very quickly, erasing any chance he had for a shot. SMU player down. And as the ball goes out for a throw-in. Is that Pino who's down? I believe it is. I was just waiting on the confirmation. As we get a look at this play, by Mitchell. Then you see, yeah, and there you see the two defenders closing in. A third defender arrives, giving Mitchell absolutely zero chance for a shot. And then Bailey tried to, Bailey Sparks tried to chip one over the top. And you see Lopez hold his hands up to Bailey saying, Yep, I know, I should have been there. Pino is back up. 35 minutes left to play. And here you're going to see the Pioneers doing the right thing. Bailey Sparks kicked it out of bounds to stop the clock when Pino is down and the Pioneers. That is a reflection of coaching and sportsmanship. They throw the ball in and immediately give it to the opponent to equalize the chance. Sort of a tip of the cap to the uh, to the Mustangs for playing it out of bounds for their teammate. By the way, in the second half, Brock Pope did not start at that defender position for SMU. Now he can re-enter in the second half at some point after he left with an issue in the first half as Mitchell wanted some kind of foul call here and now there will be. Yeah, Mitchell was reaching for the ball and David Biggers got under him and pretty much the entire SMU bench got up up in arms looking for a whistle. They didn't get a call but they did get the throw. Throw goes right into Denver here. However SMU takes it away and here's Escorcia. Escorcia has Pino joining. Pino into the box. Escorcia off to the right to Mitchell. Right back to Escorcia again. Numbers for SMU. Bailey Sparks, though, could not corral it. And as the ball went away to Lucas Fisher, Sparks is called for nipping. Escorcia made a nice run, and he's he's not the fastest guy on the field, but he's very, very quick. And he got into the offensive third and found four black shirts surrounding him, so he played it off to the side and then got it back in a in a tough spot setting up the turnover. He's aggressive. He's such a hard worker. He is and you look at him and you think OK this guy's five foot five or at least that's how what he's listed as on the roster. He's going to be the shortest guy on the field in just about every game this year for SMU. But he's so quick and he's one of those guys who seemingly just holds the ball on a string. He can be surrounded by players and keep possession. His center of balance, his center of gravity is very low. And he is a very, very creative passer. Ian Smith stopping on it, getting it back from Bassett. But the play is intercepted by Lopez. And no foul given. Denver takes it back. Denver hunting that equalizing goal. SMU had gone up 2-0 before Denver scored on a redirection off the body of O.J. O'Finran. 
for his second goal of the season and second goal in as many matches. That assist on that play given to Sam Bassett. And since then, Denver has been looking for that goal that would level things up. Denver has six shots. Four of them have been on frame. SMU has five shots. Two have been on frame, and obviously they have both gone in against Isaac Nami, one of the better keepers in the nation. This one through to Bassett. Bassett drives it, ricochets out, and Johnson could not save it. Willoughby has it saved off the line by Bynum as Johnson finally recovers. He was well off his line. I was really distracted by the fact Johnson had made contact with Ronan Wynn, and you were wondering if some kind of penalty was going to be called. You see Bassett's shot, and the man who makes the save is his own teammate, Willoughby. There you see Johnson come take his man out. Ball comes right to Willoughby, but there are three red shirts in the way. And then you see Chance Johnson come screaming in from the right side. I thought he was going to almost knock it in his own net. Bit of a frantic scramble, but Mustang is able to keep it at one for the Pioneers, at least for the moment. Credit where credit is due. Rubel Kaba was the one to send it away. And a corner kick on the way for Sam Bassett. Bassett a good one to the top of the six, but it drifts wide. But another corner. This one went off SMU. Corner number six of the evening on the way for Denver. Obviously, you'd rather give up corners than shots on goal, but if you give up too many, you start playing with fire. This is a season high for corners for Denver. They had four in the Stanford win. Pass it once more. And we still have 30 minutes to go. Bassett near post. Georgievich is there. And this time it will just be a throw in for the Pioneers with 30 minutes left in regulation in SMU. Still on top two to one. The shots now eight to five in favor of Denver tonight. SMU had has had a, a few moments here in the second half, but it's been a lot of Denver possession again. Another great chance. Wynn tries to send it across, but it is kept in on the backside by the Pioneers. Out front, Ben Smith, the conductor, and a foul is called against Jalen Mitchell. Not only that, Mitchell entices a yellow card, and the Pioneers will have yet another free kick and a restart opportunity. Not the most violent collision in the world, but the fact that Mitchell arrived a second late. I think the card is certainly justified. Here you see him closing on Smith. And after Smith has already played the ball away, you see Mitchell got his foot in there and sort of spiked him in the, in the foot or the ankle. Certainly not trying to hurt him. He just a second late reaching for the ball. But the fact that he got, got the ankle um, is what prompted the card. More set piece work now for the Denver Pioneers. Down two to one and a great chance again for Sam Bassett to try to get something going. Just in case they decide to go with Ian Smith. He's there to play it with his left foot. But as normal, it is Bassett chipping it in. Great header is down in the box, but it was going to be offside anyway. The flag is up. Johnson was there to make the stab, but this one was dead on arrival. Beautiful little chip shot here by Bassett. The flag is already up, and Chance Johnson using all six foot four of his frame to stretch out and make sure, obviously from his position, he didn't see whether the flag was up or not. Stretches all the way out and snagged it before it found the lower left corner of the cage. Aiden Semmelsberger is back in. He was an original starter. O.J. O'Fenrin is back out there as well, also an original starter. And O'Fenrin and Willoughby playing shoulder to shoulder. They're really both strikers. This Pioneer team, they can change shape in a hurry. They have a lot of different ways that they feel comfortable playing. And right now it's with Willoughby as the striker and O'Fenrin kind of as another attacking mid with uh, Bassett on that left side. Bassett trying to poke it away from Escorcia, but Escorcia, the water bug, turns back upfield and finds Jalen Mitchell. Talking to Jamie Franks about his lineup, he seemed 
uh, flexible in what we wanted to call different players because as he described, as you just said, there's so much fluidity in this lineup. He has so many guys who can play up front and then slide back to midfield or vice versa or defenders who can step into the midfield. So yes, now they have two strikers on the field, which makes sense. You're still chasing the game with 28 minutes left. You need that equalizer, so they'll start to pinch more numbers forward. I call it shape indifference from Jamie Franks. <laughs> Here's a cow, a cow. Dangerous on the right foot. Bynum blocks it out, but corner number seven coming up for Denver as they lurk looking for the equalizer. The field does feel like it's tilted in Denver's favor over the uh, the last portion of the second half here. Seven corner kicks is an awful lot for a full game, and we've still got 27 minutes to go. And if you watch the way the Pioneers line up, they try a bunch of different formations, giving the SMU defense a lot to think about from one corner to the next. Another chance for Bassett. Sends it right to the top of the six. It's on the ground in the area of O'Finran, but he could not slide onto it. And of course, he escapes until he is shoulder checked down by Ben Smith. Again, laws of physics. Scorsia was heading up field with at least five Denver defenders out in front of him. He had nowhere to play that ball. If anything, I would have thought maybe he would just knock it 50 yards upfield and out of bounds. But he pushed it a little bit, and then he lunged into Smith. And Smith is bigger than he is. He hit the deck, and it was done also. It was done right in front of referee Michael Laverne. One of those unsung plays that you will never see written about, but that's a play keeping possession that is significant for the Mustangs. Jalen Mitchell with speed through the middle. Mitchell looking for Lopez, but Mitchell takes it himself into the box. Mitchell still on it and runs out of room, but earns a corner as eventually the angle was cut down and he bangs it off of Isaac Nami. Terrific run by Jalen Mitchell. Here you see him cut back behind Baloli and then get around a defender. It's one thing to be fast, and he is, but that start and stop, that suddenness of pace changes that he is at, has added to his game makes him a much more effective player. It's the second time he's had a center back for Denver on skates. The first time on the goal, it was Trevor Wright. This time it was Baloli, and they are both exceptional. So the corner coming for Bailey Sparks and SMU, their second corner of the night. Sparks serves it in, looking near post, punched out, backed up by Mitchell. Mitchell serves it in, and the header does get through, but SMU was offsides and a quick restart for Denver as Nami gets it back into the attacking portion of the field for his Pioneers after his punch out. That's such a tough play for offensive players. When you have a corner or a restart that far in the offensive third and the opponent punches it out, the opposing defense is going to be racing off the goal line to try to draw you into an offside trap and also get numbers forward. And so Milton Lopez was saw that ball go up in the air and by the time he was waiting for it to come down to him he was already two or three yards behind every Denver defender drawing that offside flag. Wonder if Dylan Akau is politicking for not only a foul there but a possible card against Pino. You don't normally see that unless uh, looking for an upgrade to a red or something like that but that was quite a Dylan Akau popping up and wondering why there wasn't an advancement of that situation. So Bassett, another free kick. This time closer to the sideline and angled out to the left of Chance Johnson, the keeper. Bassett going toward the goal, popped into the air, header won by SMU, and then won by Denver. Oh, Finran was on that one. Now it's on the ground and a little possession for the Pioneers. Bassett sending it right back in. Georgievich willing to get into the air for his second header of the evening here. And now SMU is going to get the benefit of a foul call on Denver to get it back. Georgievich a willing participant in the air. Two games ago, after the draw with Oral Roberts, Kevin Hudson and his staff challenged the Mustangs 
to play with more compete, to be more, more urgent on 50-50 balls. That last sequence there looked like they took careful notes during that speech because you had red jerseys flying all over the place, throwing themselves in front of shots and diving in on 50-50 balls to try to regain possession for SMU. Lopez induces a foul here. As SMU does not go vertically very often, this yellow card will go on Trevor Wright, but on this quick restart, they're trying to catch Denver off balance. And that can be a very effective change of pace, right? Kevin Hudson and Jamie Franks and their staffs, they know each other so well. They know that each prioritizes possession above all. Um, all right, above all after goals. But they both build out of the back. They both build through the middle third uh, in transition. So if you get too comfortable assuming that your opponent is going to zigzag back and forth across the field, that's when there may be a gap opening upfield. And when Milton Lopez hit the Jets, Trevor Wright ended up taking him down, maybe preventing a one-on-one -on -one with Isaac Nami. Free kick by Sparks, serving it in, popped into the air. First and second ball, won by Denver, and a throw in for SMU. Get a good look at Denver's Ben, ben Smith, captain, the engine. 100 percent he is going to be a coach <laughs> down the line says Jamie Franks his soccer IQ is elite and what's the what's the better word for elite because that may be who what he is it's just it's beyond elite it's his soccer IQ but it's also his ability to incorporate his teammates and bring them into the fight so to speak I think, first of all, you could say high soccer IQ for a lot of guys on both of these teams. But yes, for Ben Smith, it's extraordinary. And but you could say that about Sam Bassett. You could say that about Bololi. You could say that about several of these guys. Very, very smart team. We talked about their academic performance. The smarts do not are not limited to just the classroom with this bunch. Another foul on Trevor Wright as Lopez has been willing to get his body in the right spot to create restarts for SMU. Under 22 minutes left, and the Mustangs continue to hold on to the one-goal lead. Lopez has really evolved uh, into a much more complete player, and yes, part of his role is doing that dirty work, chasing the ball getting into 50-50s, even if it doesn't result in a shot, getting the ball and dropping it to midfielders, and he does it pretty well. Foul on Dylan Akau. Give Bynum a chance for the free kick here. 21 minutes left. Does it surprise you we haven't seen Brock Pope in the second half, assuming that was that hamstring was just a an issue with, his, uh, with cramping that you know, such a valuable piece. And again, we want to emphasize Bynum is a very capable player as well, but that uh, Pope hasn't been able to get back out there. Yeah, I mean, your point about Bynum is right. It's really almost like the Mustangs have four starters for three spots, and that math doesn't quite add up. So you've got a good player there, obviously. Um, look, cramps, we've all had them. Cramps can be painful. They can be, they can take a while to recover from. And on hot, muggy nights, it's not broiling hot by Dallas standards. It's not even close to broiling hot by Dallas standards. But the mugginess often adds to cramping. And this may very well be one of those nights where you just say, tell number two to take a seat and hope he's ready for the next one. The next one is pretty important. Next Saturday, opening up ACC play against a very good pit team for the SMU Mustangs. Exactly. As much as the Mustangs would like to win tonight, the game against Pitt is more important. The ACC is murderer's row, there's no doubt. And SMU getting prepared for it with a team that's assassin-like in Denver. Scorcia goes down, no foul given. And here comes Ofenrin in the middle, sliding it off. Bassett inside, and the equalizing goal is in for Dylan Akau. Beautiful connection for Denver. It started with Ofenrin, and then Bassett feeds Akau. We are level at two. And the Mustangs thought they had him caught in an offside trap. 
beautiful pass by uh, by Ofenrin and a cow who's been yeah. kind of everywhere. Bynum thought so, but not on the other side. If you look at Zarnik, Bynum thought so, and so did Chance Johnson. You see his hand go up, and he looks straight at the uh, at the linesman on the far side, as if to say, "Where was the flag on that one?" And it can be very difficult to judge, right? If you're the goalkeeper and you've got a player coming at you at 100 miles an hour, it is so difficult to tell: is he even with my defender? Is he a step ahead? Is he a step behind? But Dylan Acau, who has played a really, really nice game tonight, gets the equalizer for the for the Pioneers. And by the way, I think a shout out is deserved for the Denver fans. These fans have traveled. This is not like, you know, the women's game coming up after this is against TCU. They're 30 minutes away. Denver, there are a lot of Denver hats and, and shirts in the stands tonight at Washburn uh, Soccer and Track Stadium. Dylan Akau scoring the second goal of his career, and what a goal it is. SMU coming with Chris Demon at the striker position on the substitution. That's exactly what Jamie Franks was hoping for. He was telling his team five minutes ago, just keep it going, keep cycling through it. We are really close to breaking through yet again, and he was absolutely right. Dylan Acau, the latest to score, one of the top right backs in the country, brings Denver back to even with SMU after spotting the Mustangs that two goal lead. Dylan Acau is a lot like uh, Kieran Pino for SMU. You, you list him as a defender, but I mean, you look at Acau now, he's almost lined up as a right wing on the far side. Very fast player going up that, that far side, and he has carried the ball into the offensive third a lot tonight, and he's also a very solid defender. Oh, watch out, Bassett, the All American, turning on it. Scorsia hunting him down, plays it for Willoughby. Great look for Willoughby. Slides it back in. The chip to the middle by Smith. Knocked back out top to Semmelsberger. And Denver will have possession after evening it up at two apiece. And remember last year, they just could not get level with SMU in that round of 32 game. On the backside, here comes Smith crossing it. Too strong. And they had circled this match coming into the season. And after spotting SMU two goals, they have responded in a big way. The crosser is knocked out by Pino and a corner coming up for the Pioneers to try to go in front. So they've spent their whole evening taking corner kicks. And again, I'm, I'm impressed by the number of different alignments they use on corner kicks. They had the one where everybody on the field almost was jammed around Chance Johnson. They've played everyone out at the 18 for a jailbreak. Now the, the majority is circled around the penalty kick spot. Bassett goes low near post. And a foul is called that sent Bailey Sparks to the ground with under 18 minutes left to play. And Sparks checks those breadwinners. Yeah, he's checking the teeth. Probably got a shoulder or an elbow or something. I think maybe he bumped heads with somebody. See him spitting a couple of times and checking to see what comes out, but fortunately for SMU, number 10 seems to be okay. 17 and a half left and huge credit to the Denver Pioneers. Steve, you said it when they went down 2 nothing. They're not going to go anywhere. They're just going to keep playing and they have played it right back to level here in Dallas. And Ian Smith hunts that header all the way into the corner, but O.J. O'Finran was offside. O'Finran was offside because I don't think he assumed he knew Ian Smith could go climb the ladder like that, but Smith absolutely launched it into the offensive third. I don't think O'Fenron was expecting it to get that far forward that quickly. Just to keep you apprised, there are some showers in the area. 
closest lightning strike 18 miles away. So we've got some distance, and it does seem to be the storms moving away from us as SMU now looks for a goal to go back in front. Danny Escorcia trying to play it inside, looking for Mitchell, but just slightly behind him, over the wrong shoulder, if you will. And Mitchell looked like he was trying to reach back behind him and flick it through his own legs, unable to get a foot on it. SMU now pressing forward, something that they have not done a lot, obviously, while protecting the lead. Now Pino moves into the middle. Escorcia trying to win one back over to Pino and couldn't quite get there. Long run cut off by Cesar Ruvacaba. Stoppage coming in a card against Danny Escorcia for that slide. It's third yellow of the year. Yeah, that's awfully early to be picking up a third, but I mean, it's it's deserved, right? He's a step late and then he gets into the feet there after the ball is played. And you certainly can't begrudge him his competitive effort trying to get the ball back, but step late. Definitely part of his M.O. obviously is that competitiveness, the aggressiveness, trying to win the ball back for SMU. 16 minutes left, and Denver looking to go ahead now. Aku is offsides, though. And it may have been O'Finran in the middle. Willoughby was there as well. Akau was looking to serve it in. We'll see who ended up being the aggressor here. No, it was Akau. Yeah, I was with you. I thought it might have been O'Finran as well. The fact is they were they were both close that giveaway Bassett rips it high however chance Johnson asks for some support from his back line and his holding mids for this last 15 chance Johnson would like to have a mulligan on that one because not only did he airmail it over the bend over the goal but he had about 10 yards of open space in front of him he could have taken another dribble or two that's obviously well within his range to shoot from there but he'd love to have another swing at it. Bassett trying to catch Johnson unawares. Fourteen and a half minutes left. SMU going up to nothing and since then it has been all Denver with a goal by O'Finran and also a goal by a cow. O'Finran has an assist as well. Sam Bassett has two assists in the match. In his career, assist number 16 and 17. Another dangerous ball for Smith going low, and Johnson is right there. Oh, Smith, if it would have been maybe six inches a foot to the right, Denver has the lead. Terrific save by Johnson laying out for it, and even better yet, pouncing on that rebound. If he's not 6'4", first of all, that ball's in the net. And second of all, that ball didn't get very far away from him, but he quickly scrambled to swallow it up before one of the pioneers could jump on it for a dunk. Ian Smith, first team all Summit League last year. Guy had just got that dog mentality. He nearly put it in the back of the net to make it three to two. SMU though, trying to go back in front and Demon waltzing into the 18 before it is clear. There's a player down for SMU. Alex Salvo now wins it. As SMU kicks it into touch, it's going to be Kieran Pino, and Pino, who does struggle with cramping on occasion, waits for the training staff to come out after going the whole way in this one up until now. Yeah, Pino is one of those guys who's great in October when it gets a little cooler, but. <laughs> When it's hot and muggy at the beginning of the year, you're right. We've seen, we have seen this before. And if you're SMU, obviously you are very hopeful that their athletic trainer, Becky Regal, is going to be able to get him. There you see him get him up off his feet or onto his feet. And hopefully she's going to be able to help him out with a little, uh, what do they do, pickle juice and some sort of an electrolyte drink from Powerade? She's loaded up with whatever she needs, I'll tell you that.
We are due to get a little bit of rain here soon. It remains to be seen whether or not any of that rain will include lightning here in Dallas. Closest strike about 13 miles away, but that is in a cell that is moving away from us. As SMU will bring Ryan Clinton Pimentel into the match for Kieran Pino. 13 minutes left to go. Alex Salvo, one of the guys to go the whole way on this muggy night for SMU. Spotted a two goal lead, but unable to hold it tonight, unlike last year in the round of 32 when Denver felt just short and was sent home by the Mustangs. Alex Salvo is one of those one of those guys that some coaches refer to as box to box midfielders. He does so much of the chasing and the dirty work and holding possession and he never comes out and he gives you the sense that if you wanted to play a double header and go 180 minutes he still wouldn't come out. Again, Denver intentionally giving up possession in a sportsmanlike fashion. However, Johnson misses Georgievic up that right side. And there is a stoppage by our referee coming in and talking to the alternate official here, Aaron Donahoe and Michael Laverne. Laverne, that tall drink of water. And there will be a yellow issued against the Denver bench. And obviously, Aaron Donahoe convinced Michael Laverne that such a warning needed to be issued against the Denver bench there. Now, from our standpoint, we're not quite sure who earned that, that yellow. It's a big gaggle of Denver players wearing warm-ups. It's just tough to see as Escorcia gets back up to his feet and then gets pushed to the ground by Ian Smith. And you see Escorcia get up saying, you gave me a yellow a few moments ago. Where's the yellow there? Well, there you go. And again, partly that is because of the height difference. As you see him punch the ball forward, and from our pre from our angle, it looked like an arm had come up. It didn't. That was chest-to-chest -chest contact. Jalen Mitchell on the restart. Mitchell trying to get the advantage in the corner. Mitchell dribbling in. Mitchell leaves it behind him, though, and commits the foul, pulling back on Bassett. Twelve minutes left for one of these teams to try to go in front. SMU does lead the all-time series against Denver, four, two, and one. More of the games in this series have actually been played in the Mile High City than Big D. And they are very different environments, right? If you go to Denver, you've got to play at altitude. If you come to Dallas, you've got to play with heat and mugginess that they don't have in Denver. So it is an adjustment for the visiting team every time they meet. Denver has not struggled with cramping like SMU has in this game, at least to this point that we've seen as Bynum's able to run onto this one and keep it away from a cow who had that leveling goal. SMU able to reverse it out to Jalen Mitchell, who's playing an outside back position right now, or an outside mid position. And Mitchell down to Demon. Demon back to the goal, looking to turn. It was a tough one, but eventually he picks up the corner as it's cleared away by Trevor Wright. Second time. Demon has drawn a, a, a restart just by plowing through multiple defenders. The first time obviously led to the uh, penalty kick that Bailey Sparks scored to give the Mustangs a 2-0 lead. And this time gets a corner kick. Again, it'll be Sparks. Sparks to the left side of Nami, who has the clean sheet in the second half. Sparks, low liner, tipped into the air and lands on top of the goal. I thought that might have been another corner kick, but those are so difficult to tell when you blast it in between a couple of players and it's anybody's guess which way it's going to be ruled. Expecting a few drops of rain in the next few minutes here in Dallas. Ten minutes left to go, and 
Trying to see if this is going to be a draw. Will the Denver comeback? A Denver win if they can pick up a goal or SMU firing back with a goal of their own. As Clinton Pimentel is called for the foul running up the back of Ronan Wynn. Quick restart by the Pioneers after that foul on Clinton Pimentel. And again, you see them trying to stretch the Mustangs out of that compact defensive alignment by switching fields pretty regularly. Scores here. Outside to Georgievich. He's a guy that can make a play. If SMU is looking for that go-ahead goal. Scorcia has it taken away, though, by Ben Smith. Now the Pioneers, who have been possession-rich in this match, get another chance. Here's Wynn. Chips it up the sidewall. A cow onto it. Into the box, solid header by Rubacaba, and then Clanton Pimentel is able to win that second ball for SMU before it is taken back by Ben Smith, so solid in the midfield. He really is, and that's sort of a theme throughout this uh, Denver team. When there are 50-50 balls, they solid is the perfect word for it. They come out of they come out of those 50-50 balls with possession a majority of the time. Right advancing and finding Simmelsberger. Pioneers chip it in. Back post. Smith is there well offside, though. Smith way offsides. And with eight minutes left, SMU will have it. He was offside, but Chance Johnson obviously making sure. You see him streak around, yeah. Well, well when, not you're by right. much when, when the, the ball, ball was played. Exactly, yeah. when the ball was played, he wasn't off by much. Chance Johnson not leaving it up to uh, anyone's discretion. Johnson with the win behind him this half. He's going to drive it out of play into the Mustang bench. We talked in the early in the second half about whether the wind would have an impact. That is where the wind will have an impact because Chance Johnson has a huge cannon of a leg. And if he can get the ball up in the air, it, he can get it to really carry. They love the ball in the feet of a cow. Willoughby tried to touch it to a cow again. Willoughby's pass wasn't great, though, and Sparks able to turn it upfield. But Escorcia not able to catch up with that slider. And here comes Ben Smith again, out to a cow. A cow serves it all the way across. And just way too strong. Nobody there on the back post for Denver. We're getting up. SMU ready to bring in Richard Garcia. Jalen Mitchell doing some nice work, and Garcia coming in. And Garcia more of a, a defensive type player than Mitchell is. Is that Kevin Hudson saying, well, today I'm just feeling like, and you could put Bailey Sparks in an advanced position and he can play attacking midfield, but. And that's exactly what's happening. Bailey Sparks is going up there almost as an extra forward alongside Demon. I think what that is, is Kevin Hudson saying, Mitchell's been putting in a lot of miles tonight mm. and may just be out of gas. And if you're going to play for the win or even try to withstand uh, the pioneer attack for another six plus minutes. You want fresh legs anywhere you can get them. Because here comes a nice ball into the six. Pass it. Inaccurate on the header, but cleared out and Simmelsberger able to keep it alive. Simmelsberger gets the one two right back, slides it across. Bassett in a dangerous spot. Half clearance. Smith is back there. And then Sparks able to knock it back out near midfield with under six minutes left to play. Yeah, and when you're in a tie game with five minutes left, it really feels like you're back on your heels. And at that point, just a, a clearance to almost anywhere is a good play because if nothing else, it allows your teammates to catch a half a second's breath. But right now, the Mustangs look like they're on their heels just a bit and have to regain possession and get a little composure in order to build an attack into the offensive third. In the direction of Willoughby, but 
SMU able to win this ball as Escorcia plays it forward to Clanton Pimentel. Makes it to Demon. We'll give it back to Escorcia to try to build something. It's not a typical SMU game when it comes to possession. And, you know, there's one reason why. It's because you're playing such a quality side in Denver on the other end. Right. I mean, the Mustangs are a very good possession team, usually a better possession team than their opponent. And when you have two exceptional possession teams on the field, someone is going to come out on the short end in terms of time with the ball. So far, that has been SMU. Under five left. And for Denver, that heavy first touch. And so Clanton Pimentel able to nip it away. See how aggressive Escorcia wants to be as he finds Sparks. Sparks with Demon out in front. Sparks trying to toe poke it forward. But Clanton Pimentel backing it up onto his left foot. The drive and a corner kick upcoming as SMU quickly on the counter attack gets a chance in the final third. I think that was a really nice idea by Sparks. You see him collect the pass here, and the Denver defense is watching because Chris Demon is uh, running over to the right wing, and Sparks was trying to hit the outside in shot and try to bend it around Nami. It was a good idea. Got snuffed out at the top, though. Sparks to hit the fourth corner tonight for SMU. Sparks in the air. Really good ball, but it's headed away. And on the backside, Clinton Pimentel tries to play it on the ground, and it ends up in a throw-in for SMU. And this throw-in is coming from Cesar, Ru Cesar Rubalcaba, who again has a very long, sort of a line drive kind of throwing style. It's not quite like a corner kick, but this will travel and get into this box and create a chance uh, that the Pioneers will have to defend. Rubacaba's throw. First header won by the Pioneers, and then Georgievich chips it in. SMU is not on side, and then finally, it is going to be a restart for Denver with under three minutes left to play. That's exactly what we talked about a few moments ago. When the ball gets punched out and sent back in, it's so easy for the offensive players to get caught in an offside position because that defense is going to be pushing out, trying to catch their opponent in a bad spot, and it worked for Denver. Last match for Denver, they built a 2-0 lead and had the opponent come back on them. As O'Fenrin goes down in the box, obviously the Denver fans here looking for a call, but none comes. Today, it's Denver going down 2 mil, and then SMU giving up the equalizers. Another throw in for the Mustangs with under two minutes left to play in a match level at two. Sparks had his jersey tugged, but not hard enough to draw a whistle. Now the long ball looking for Chris Demon, but it drifts just a little bit over the touchline south of the uh, SMU bench. We're closing in on 90 seconds. It's been an incredible effort by Denver in this one to mount the comeback. Do they have a magic moment to try to pull out the victory? Out to the edge to a count. Starting to build. Into the 18, it's headed away and then reached by Escorcia for the half clearance. And Clinton Pimentel able to get it back in possession for SMU with a minute to go. But taken away and a handball is called against the Pioneers. Escorcia was looking at Bailey Sparks out on the right wing and he was quick to offer an assist to uh, Michael Laverne making that handball call. If it hadn't been called, it would have been a potentially fatal giveaway. Chance Johnson has that big leg. That Hail Mary kick in the direction of Demon. SMU runs onto it. 
Out wide, Clinton Pimentel. A final chance with 25 seconds. Clinton Pimentel on the right foot, knocked down by Demon and then cleared away by Maloli, at least initially. Now Bynum gets it right back in, headed back out by Ian Smith. Maybe one more shot for SMU. Five seconds. And that's going to do it. SMU builds a 2-0 lead in this one. The Pioneers come back to level it on a goal by Dylan Akal that falls short of the win. And maybe these teams will meet again.